And I hope noble lords will forgive me if I don't actually call these people covert human intelligence sources. They are police spies, and we have to be clear about that when we use this language so that people outside of your lordship's chamber can understand what we're talking about. Now, I rise and speak in support of Amendments 1 and 2, which I have signed, but quite honestly, all of the amendments in here are, as Noble Lord Lord Paddock has said, simply damage limitation, and I'm staggered that the government lawyers have actually allowed this legislation to be presented to your Lordship's House. It is appalling. And um, I also, uh, I liked um, the Noble Lord, Lord Ross's comments about the Noble Lady, Lady Chakrabarti. I think that her stance on this is not factionalism. It's actually a principled stance by a lawyer that understands civil liberties and human rights. And we could all learn from that. I would like to focus specifically on my Amendment 4, which might seem a little... Um, uh, less powerful or less important than the um, other amendments that we're coming to today and on Wednesday. But I think it is actually quite important because what we are will be allowing criminals to do, or, or officers, police spies, whoever, whoever they are, is they will be authorised to make money by criminal activities and can then keep that money. Now, I would like those profits to be recoverable through the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002, and I really would like a proper, clear answer from the Minister on this. I've asked multiple times since second reading, but haven't yet had an answer on how the government will recover the profits made by a police spy under a Criminal Conduct Authorisation, a CCA. For example, a drugs informant could be authorised to sell drugs as part of an investigation, of those higher up the chain. Now I'd like to know, can the informant keep the money that they make from selling those drugs? Or what if somebody involved in a criminal enterprise of slavery and trafficking is authorised to continue their role in order to catch the organisers? Can the informant keep the money they make from people trafficking or are paid as a result of what would be criminal activity but for the fact they had a cri criminal conduct authorisation? In effect, this bill would give a backdoor, off the books way for police, intelligence services and other agencies to fund their spies. The only answer I've had from the government, which I think was a bit shabby considering I asked this question directly several times, was in an all peers letter dated 3rd of December where the, the minister said criminal conduct which takes place outside of the scope of a criminal conduct authorisation where as a result a police spy may accrue benefits, i.e. continuing to make illicit profits alongside their work as a spy, would still be criminal conduct for the purposes of the confiscation regime in Proceeds of Crime Act and unlawful conduct for the purposes of the civil recovery regime. And such benefits could be liable to be recovered under either of those regimes. Now, that actually doesn't answer my question. It's quite long, but it doesn't answer my question. I need to know how conduct within a criminal conduct authorisation within a CCA and any resulting profits will interact with the Proceeds of Crime Act. And I need to know whether and how and if the government will recover those profits. The fact that my question has so far totally been ignored and the answer or the, the response, not it wasn't an answer, it was a response, only discuss conduct that is outside of a cr criminal conduct authorisation suggests to me that the government is happy to allow criminals to benefit, and this is therefore an issue which has to be probed further. Criminals will be allowed to keep any proceeds of a crime if the handler has authorised the crime. Surely, surely, that seems a, a complete anomaly, and I would like to know exactly what the government is thinking. Um, if the Minister could um, answer my question, how profits made within a criminal conduct authorisation, which would otherwise be illegal, will be recovered, I would be very grateful. Otherwise, something quite corrupt is happening here. When a handler can authorise a spy, who could be an, uh, an officer or uh, a criminal already, to actually keep money, keep profits, from a crime, I think this has to be exposed and I really want an answer to my question.